May 3rd, 2013, from the stylish high-tech above-ground studios of Ribbit Media in Providence, Rhode Island, this is News on News. <laughs> For May 3rd, 2013, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Governor Perry stomping on other people's First Amendment rights for making fun of how he uses his First Amendment rights. The political cartoon which lambasted Texas Governor Rick Perry for his administration's unreasonable deference to business following the West Texas fertilizer plant explosion made him sad. And that's funny. Syria's civil war intensifies, finally giving a much-needed leg up in the tourism trade to Detroit. Atheist church, pointless or just plain silly? Why not both? Rice and letter suspect Paul Kevin Curtis released, no longer under suspicion. That's good, because I need an Elvis impersonator. NBA's Jason Collins comes out as gay. Good for him. Hmm? I hope so. The news media sure is making a big deal about it. Georgia steps out of the 1960s with its first integrated prom. Good job. Wow. Elizabeth Hasselbeck, now free to explore other opportunities and spend time with her family. Landing gear from 9-11 plane found in space between buildings. Girly mags found stuffed under Central Park. UFO hearing about as worthwhile as UN non-binding resolution to protect dandelions. Tim Tebow, now free to explore other opportunities and spend time with his family. Correction, UFO hearing about as worthwhile as UN non-binding resolution to protect leprechauns. This week, the crazy meter here at the News Undies News That Shouldn't Be Newsroom pegged and stayed there. Here are three stories that drove the nail well below flush. Father Roberto Francisco Daniel can no longer celebrate the divine right because he has been excommunicated, said the Baru Diocese in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That's a pretty serious punishment for people who think it is. And why? Oh, why? Pray, Mother Church. Where? Why? Share with us the Father's grievous transgression that we may avoid inspiring your boundless wrath. The father had suggested that the Catholic Church reconsider its treatment of LGBT folks and adapt to modern reality. Heresy, said the church. Fortunately, Father Bob had the good sense to tell him, you can't fire me because I quit. And then this happened. Northville, Michigan mother Gail Horalek has filed a formal complaint against the public school district where her daughter attends 7th grade classes. Makes sense. Public schools are doing all kinds of crazy things these days, like teaching to the test, cutting music and arts programs in favor of sports, and trying to sneak biblical fairy stories into science classes. So, what had Northville School done in, to inflame her ire? <laughs> they assigned The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank to be read by students in the 7th grade. Those baths! Wait, the diary of Anne Frank? Well, I suppose that's understandable. The whole Holocaust thing, war, hiding, hiding in fear. I... Wait, what? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm being told the complaint had to do with the passage wherein Anne discovers her genitals. Pornography, Gail calls it. Pardon me, Gail. With your attitudes, how exactly did you end up being the mother of a daughter in the seventh grade? And then, this had to happen. HuffPo blogger dishonestly conflates race and religion to cast a sour light on Dawkins and Harris. Usama al-Azami, a PhD candidate in Near Eastern Studies at Princeton University, wrote a rather whiny and addle blog post under the incendiary title, quote, is Richard Dawkins a racist? End quote. Almost immediately, Alazami walks back the racist claim, then calls him a xenophobe, 
and by conflating religion with culture, culture with nation, and nation with race, basically calls Dawkins a racist again. Then, he beamed Sam Harris with the same unsportsmanlike wild pitch. What al-Azami fails to grasp is that empirically, irrespective of the particular Islamic texts, the de facto practice of Islam encompasses a broad range of attitudes, ideals, and actions. I don't know what sort of Muslim he is in his private life, but I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt as a person. His beliefs, on the other hand, I have to say no thanks. If he wants to be the Muslim equivalent of a cafeteria Catholic and go along with the bits he likes and discount the bits he doesn't like, that's his business. That doesn't change the fact that the book still contains the bits he doesn't like. And it also doesn't change the fact that some people, Muslim or not, are prone to jump straight to bitter victim land, and the less pleasant parts of the Islamic doctrine seem to cater to that mentality. Just because many, maybe most, Muslims are dark-skinned, that doesn't mean questioning or criticizing the precepts, doctrine, or practice of Islam makes someone a racist. It just makes one skeptical. On the other hand, rhetorical moves like yours, Usama, just make you a douchebag. And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? While NASA has been flippity-flopping since 1986, trying to come up with something to replace the space shuttle, Richard Branson has thrown some money at XPRIZE winner Scaled Composites and built a passenger-rated space plane, which took its first powered flight this week. It is notable that the U.S. Air Force did basically the same thing back in the 50s and 60s with a single-seat rocket plane called the X-15, but that was with Cold War military money behind them. Branson's program hopes to have paying customers in space either this year or next. Meanwhile, NASA hopes to have a manned flight of its Orion capsule by 2017. Maybe. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, you can submit your story tips online at NewsUndies.com. News Undies is a weekly show. We'll be back on Friday, May 10th with fresh undies. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, ignore us on MySpace, tell your friends, and buy News Undies Kitsch. Thanks for watching. Until next time, for all of us here at News Undies, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be peeling back the sod in Central Park. It burns! Ugh! I've got a question for you. Why is it so hot in here? One take! One take! One take! One take! One take! One take! Ooh, piece of candy! One take!